Hello and welcome back. We're picking up from yesterday where God delivered sweet revenge upon Haman for his wicked schemes uh, with chapter 8 today. On that day, King Ahasuerus gave the house of Haman, the enemy of the Jews, to Queen Esther, and Mordecai came before the king, for Esther had disclosed what he was to her. In chapter 2, we learn that he was her cousin who raised her like his own daughter. Uh, verse 2. The king took off his signet ring, which he had taken away from Haman, and gave it to Mordecai. And Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. A signet ring was used by ancient kings to designate authority, honor, or ownership. He was basically sharing his power now with Mordecai, giving him a voice to help make important decisions for the kingdom. Verse 3. Then Esther spoke again to the king, fell at his feet, wept and implored him to avert the evil scheme of Haman the Agagite and his plot which he had devised against the Jews. The king extended the golden scepter to Esther. So Esther arose and stood before the king. Then she said, If it pleases the king, and if I have found favor before him, and the matter seems proper to the king, and I am pleasing in his sight, let it be written to revoke the letters devised by Haman, the son of Hamadatha the Agagite, which he wrote to destroy the Jews who are in all the king's provinces. For how can I endure to see the calamity which will befall my people? And how can I endure to see the destruction of my kindred? So King Ahasuerus said to Queen Esther and to Mordecai the Jew, Behold, I have given the house of Haman to Esther, and him they have hanged on the gallows, because he had stretched out his hands against the Jews. Now you write to the Jews as you see fit, in the king's name, and seal it with the king's signet ring. For a decree which is written in the name of the king, and sealed with the king's signet ring, may not be revoked. So the king's scribes were called at that time in the third month, that is, the month of Sivan, on the twenty-third day, and it was written according to all that Mordecai commanded to the Jews, the satraps, the governors, and the princes of the provinces, which extended from India to Ethiopia, 127 provinces, to every province according to its script, and to every people according to their language, as well as to the Jews according to their script and their language. He wrote in the name of King Ahasuerus and sealed it with the king's signet ring and sent letters by couriers on horses, riding on steeds sired by the royal stud. So that's where the term came from. I thought my wife came up with that. <laughs> that was a good one, wasn't it? <laughs> Verse 11. In them, the king granted the Jews who were in each and every city the right to assemble and to defend their lives, to destroy, to kill, and to annihilate the entire army of any people or province which might attack them, including children and women, and to plunder their spoil on one day, in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus, the 13th day of the 12th month, that is the month Adar. A copy of the edict to be issued as law in each and every province was published to all the peoples so that the Jews would be ready for this day to avenge themselves on their enemies. The couriers hastened and impelled by the king's command went out riding on the royal steeds and the decree was given out at the citadel in Susa. Then Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal robes of blue and white, with a large crown of gold and a garment of fine linen and purple. And the city of Susa shouted and rejoiced. For the Jews, there was light and gladness and joy and honor. In each and every province and in each and every city, wherever the king's commandment and his decree arrived, there was gladness and joy for the Jews, a feast and a holiday. And many among the peoples of the land became Jews, for the dread of the Jews had fallen on them. What a tremendously incredible deliverance and victory for God's people. Let's go ahead and pray on this. Lord God, we want to take a moment to pray to you today, praising you for the gladness and joy we have in you because of your perfect and holy glory. Everything about your eternal being radiates perfect love and righteousness and we're so incredibly grateful for this truth. You are a holy, holy, holy. And when we look at the effects of our broken world, these truths shine even brighter before us. We're eager to see you and be with you, Lord. You're our father, our protector, our comforter, our leader, and our strength. 
and there's a sense of missing you, even though we've never seen each other face to face. Of course, your spirit indwells and guides us, which we're very fortunate and grateful for, but there is a sense in us that aches and longs to be in your presence. When we uh, read about how you've extended such tremendous love and mercy to Israel and the church, it fills our hearts with tremendous hope and joy to be able to be a part of your family. You've given each of us so much to be thankful for. So many moments of love and laughter with people we care and have cared for, the splendor of your creation, the sound of music and melodies that touch our souls, the intimacy of love and marriage, the gift, smells, sounds, and warmth of a newborn child, the joy and bonds of parenthood, shelter and protection through employment, and eternal life with you. We're sincere about these things, Lord. We just want to continue reminding you of our love and appreciation for everything. And again, how strongly we desire eternal peace to be in your presence, along with our heavenly family of born-again believers. We cannot wait to all be together, and we ask that you help us until that moment. Please forgive our sins, Lord, that has separated us from you and caused your son to die. Deliver us from evil and temptation in this day. Continue growing the heavenly harvest and utilizing us as instruments in your plan to do so. Don't stop working on the hearts and minds of those we love who are still lost and deceived. Help those we know and love who are in pain or are sick. Please bring them relief, healing, and peace knowing that you care for them and it's difficult for you to watch as well. Remind them of what you endured on the cross on their behalf and let them cling to that during their struggles. Bring blessing and punishment to the powers that be in our current world, decision makers who control critical laws in our lives. Punish those who are wicked and bless those trying to do what is right um, by honoring you as their motive. May our, excuse me, <coughs> may our governors and president pass bills and decisions that respect and fear your righteous laws and commands and remove those who mock you. Give us peace in these times, Lord. Help us to be content, to put the needs of others above ourselves, to die to sin, and to be used as helpful vessels for advancing your kingdom. We ask what we can do for you as we head into this week. Please guide our steps. We pray these things in your holy name. Amen. Okay, you guys. Great chapter today. Thank you for being here. I hope you have a wonderful week. I'm here with you. Let's support one another, and uh, God bless your journey as you head out. God bless. Take care.